This is John with Rockland Technologies. Welcome to Tax Time Episode 2. Welcome to Tax Time Episode 2. Did you sell? In this episode, we show you how to file crypto taxes only if you sold any HNT in the last tax year. Episode 2 only covers selling cryptocurrencies, not mining. So, if you need to record taxes for crypto mining, make sure you click here to watch Tax Time Episode 1 first. You must pay taxes when selling any cryptocurrencies. It does not matter if you mined HNT, received HNT as a gift, or if you purchase HNT yourself. If you sell, you must pay. Unless you sold for less than you paid, but we'll get to that later. How do we determine what to pay? First, we need to know the cost basis. For tax purposes, the cost basis is the original value of an asset. If you received your HNT through mining or purchase, your cost basis is simply the value at the time of receipt. Once we have the cost basis, we can use the value at the time of sale to determine if we have made a capital gain or loss on the sale. Let's look at some examples. Say that you mined or bought one token of HNT at a market value of $30 and then sold at a market value of $40. You would record a capital gain of $10 on this sale. Your cost basis was lower than the selling value, so you incurred a capital gain. Example two, if you buy or mine and then sold for a loss, you mined or bought one token of HNT at a market value of $50 and then sold at a market value of 30. You would record a capital loss of $20 on this sale. Your cost basis was higher than the selling value, so you incurred a capital loss. If instead you received your HNT as a gift, your cost basis is not determined by the cost basis at the time of receipt, but instead as the original gift donor's cost basis. There are a couple exceptions though. Example three, a gift was sold above the gifted value and the donor's basis value for a gain. If your gift has appreciated in value to above the cost donor's basis, you can use the donor's cost basis resulting in a capital gain. In this case, Jason purchased one HNT for $20, gifted it to Austin at $30, and Austin sold at $40. Austin's capital gains in this scenario is $20. Example four, gift sold above the gifted value, but below the donor basis. In this case, Jason purchased one HNT for $50, gifted it to Austin at 30, and Austin sold at 40. If your gift has appreciated in value, but not above the donor's cost basis, you do nothing. There is no capital gain or loss on this sale. Austin records no gain or loss as he sold below the donor's cost basis. Example five, a gift sold below the gifted value and the donor basis for loss. In this case, Jason purchased one HNT at $50, gives it to Austin as a gift at $30, and then after a large market downturn, Austin sells at $10. If your gift has depreciated in value since receipt and is below the donor's cost basis, you use the value of the gift at the date given. Austin uses the gift value of 30, not the original donor basis of 50, to calculate his capital loss of $20. Now, let's get into capital gains taxes. Your capital gains are subjected to two different capital gain tax rates. If your total length of ownership was less than one year before selling, you are subjected to the short-term capital gains tax rate. This is the same tax rate as your ordinary income tax rate. If you hold your H&T for one year or more, you are subjected to the long-term capital gains tax rate. Let's look at some examples. Example one. In this tax year, Jason worked at his day job and made $50,000. In the same year, he also mined 100 HNT coins with an average cost basis of $30 each. Jason then decides to sell his 100 HNT coins at the end of the year for $50 each. He mined a total value of $3,000 and sold for $5,000, thus realizing a short-term capital gain of $2,000. Jason's total earned income includes his day job of $50,000 and the $3,000 worth of mined HNT for a total of $53,000. Jason's total taxable income combines his earned income of $53,000 
with his $2,000 worth of short-term capital gains for a grand total of $55,000. This puts Jason's short-term capital gains into the 22% tax bracket. Now, watch Tax Time Episode 1 to see how Jason would also need to report the $3,000 worth of mined HNT. Now, example 2. If instead Jason had decided to hold his HNT for a full year and sold at the same amounts as in the previous example, his HNT would be taxed at the tax rate of 15%. Because long-term capital gains tax rates are lower than short-term, it is considered a tax advantage to hold your HNT for over a year before selling. How to file. If you are paper filing this year, you will need three forms. The links are in the description below. Start with Form 8949. On this form, you will reconcile all of your individual transactions to find the net total of your short-term and net total of your long-term capital gains. The totals found in Form 8949 are then transferred to Form 1040 Schedule D, which is then additionally reported on your 1040. And that concludes Part 2 for tax time. By now, you should be fully able to properly file your taxes but if you have any doubts, please contact a tax professional. If you are interested in learning more on tax strategy, make sure to subscribe and be on the lookout for Tax Time Episode 3, Did You Strategize? Where we discuss some real world scenarios and implications of when to sell and when not to sell your HT. Happy mining.